What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on an interesting Android streaming box. So this is the Station PC M3. Now just check out the size of this thing. It's compact, it's premium in quality, completely made from metal. Now when I first heard the name Station PC, I assumed it's going to be a mini Windows PC, but this is actually a mini Android streaming box. So it's got a brand new chipset with a custom OS called Station OS. So we definitely need to put this thing through its paces to find out what it's capable of and how it ranks in our top TV box performance chart of 2023. So I can't wait to test this thing out. But first of all, inside the box, you will find. So you're getting your paperwork, your user manual. Now we've got a bunch of internal cables here and what looks like a micro USB port. So this came with it, it looks optional. You're also getting an 8K compatible HDMI cable. A USB-A to Type-C cable, no idea what that's for yet, but it'll make more sense as we proceed. A remote control is also included. This looks like an infrared remote control powered by two AAA batteries, not included in the box. And the power supply comes with a bunch of connections for different countries. So I'm just gonna slip on the EU plug. So it looks like the power supply is 24 watts. And last but not least, the TV box itself. So very interesting design. It's all metal with a plastic reflective finish on top. It says Station PC. On the front, you've just got ventilation. On the side, again, it says Station PC. You've got a Type-C port, USB 3, USB 2, and micro SD expansion. And just underneath, you can see a physical power button. And if we keep going, nothing on this side. And on the other side, you've got a headphone jack, a gigabit LAN, HDMI 2.1, and a power socket. And that brings us back to the front. And this is how the bottom of the mini PC looks. All right, so let's check out the specs. So this TV box is powered by the Rock chip. 35882, which is an octa core clocked at 2.4 gigahertz. Now, for graphics, we have the integrated Mali G610 with 8 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC internal storage. This does also support an M.2 SSD expansion and you have micro SD expansion as well. Furthermore, you have 5 gigahertz Wi Fi, gigabit LAN, and Bluetooth 4.2. This is running a custom version of Android which is called Station OS. You've got HDMI 2.1 with USB-C, and this box should support up to 8K at 60 Hertz. Now, I just wanna quickly talk about the price. This thing is 279 US dollars, making this the most expensive Android streaming box we have ever seen on the channel so far. There must be something really special about this for it to have that price tag. Um, it's a brand new chipset. Maybe it's gonna be really powerful. It's gonna give you a massive performance boost. So yeah, there's a lot to test on this to find out how powerful it is um, and why the price tag is so high. Now, first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this TV box took only 15 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And this is Station OS based on Android 12. Top right, you can see a connection information for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, external hard drives and ethernet. On the left, you have local weather, and bottom left, you can see the local date and time. In the middle, we have a whole bunch of fixed shortcuts and folders, and on the right, you have a customizable vertical row of icons, so you can select five of your favorite apps to appear here. Now, if we head over to the main system settings and check out the system storage info, you will see that this box has 64 gigs of internal storage, from which you have 55 gigs free to use, and if we have a quick look in about, you will see that this box is running Android version 12. Now let's go over some of these settings and features. So this box has 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Under display, you can see the current resolution, which is 3840 by 2160. Other features to mention, you can add and connect to an FTP, Samba, or even a web DAV server. This also supports wireless file transfer through a web browser. Under advanced settings, you can actually change root access with a number of options currently available. And also what's interesting is you can switch between the M.2 interface from SATA to NVMe, which is pretty cool. Now let's have a quick look at the default system apps. So you can see we have a few apps pre-installed like video players, file managers. We've got a third party app store and you can see there is no Google Play Store included as standard, but you can install the Play Store and I'll show you how um, in a bit. Now let's open up the included third party app store. Over here, you can see a number of useful apps that you can download, including the GMS installation. So that means you can install the Play Store by downloading the GMS installation with one click. 
Now furthermore, you can also download a number of third-party app stores from here, which include Aptoy TV, APK Pure and more. So all your important apps to get started is found here. GMS installation seems to be working fine. One click installation, so nothing more for you to do. The box restarts itself and once you complete the installation, the Play Store will magically appear. I signed into Google and everything works as it should. So Google Play Store working fine on this box. Furthermore, just to confirm, there is no native option for screen mirroring for Android phones, but you can of course download AirScreen for free from the Play Store to activate iOS screen mirroring. So now I'm going to play some 4K video samples from a USB drive, and I'll be doing this with the included Video Player app. So let's begin with the usual high bitrate Jellyfish demo, that's 160 megabits per second, and you can see it's playing super smooth on this, as expected. Next, I tested the 180 megabits per second video, and again, it handled very well. And to really push this box to the limit, I played the 400 megabit per second video file. And as you can see, no sweat. High bitrate 4K playing back super smooth, even at 400 megabits per second. Thereafter, I also tested out some 4K60 videos with various HDR file formats, and they all played back beautifully vibrant colors and great looking HDR. So video playback from USB is flawless, really impressive actually. Now while we're here, I'm also testing out an AV1 clip. It's one minute in length and the file size is only like two megabytes. And as you can see, it's playing back fine. So moving on to the 4K YouTube test, starting off with the usual 4K Costa Rica video. And as you can see, the video is playing back fine. There are a few dropped frames we are achieving 4K60 with HDR. 4K60 streams from YouTube play back fine, but when you try streaming YouTube videos with HDR, that's when you get that black screen flashing before the video loads, and sometimes it doesn't load the video and the screen stays black. So there seems to be some sort of issue with HDR playback on YouTube, but this could be an isolated issue with the monitor I am currently using. As our brothers and sisters, teach them. Now Netflix was actually sideloaded as Play Store does not have the official Netflix available to download. So that means unfortunately SD quality streaming max. So no 4K or HD streaming on Netflix available on this box. And Amazon Prime Video will also give you a maximum of SD quality streaming. Okay, so let's now move on to some Android gaming starting off with Asphalt 9. Okay, so we've got a brand new chipset, so we have to test out some emulation. Starting off with PS2, we're playing SmackDown vs. Raw 2011. With the resolution upscaled to 2x native, Vulcan backend. And you can see we're achieving a very good 60 FPS performance. And just do what he does best right now. He's standing, but... So next up, PSP emulation playing GTA Liberty City Stories. We've got the resolution upscaled to 8x native with the Vulcan backend, and we're achieving 60 FPS with a super smooth PSP performance. So next up, Wii emulation with Tatsunoko Street Fighter vs Capcom. Resolution has been upscaled to 2x native with the Vulcan backend and the game is playing pretty well at 60 FPS. So next up, N64 emulation, we're playing WrestleMania 2000. I've got it upscaled to 4K resolution and you can see the game looking pretty good and we're achieving around 30 frames per second. Now for your advanced users, DRM Info shows Google Widevine level 3. And here is CPU-Z where you can check out the clock speeds. You can see we're running the Mali G610. This box is running Android 12 and has a root switch in settings. So you can decide whether your box is rooted or not. And here are the results for the internal disk speeds. So we achieved read speeds of 203 and write speeds of 100 megabytes per second. 
So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench, single core score of 719 and multi-core score of 2281. And in the Antutu benchmark test, we achieved 630K. So let's see how this compares with the others. So here is my top Android TV box performance chart for 2023, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And the ranking is based on Antutu benchmark scores. And based on that, you can see that the Station PC M3 has taken position two on this chart with a benchmark score of 630K. I've also given this box an overall rating of four out of five. So from this chart, you can see the performance scores and my overall rating all color coded to make it easier for you to read. And you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it, guys. That was the Station PC M3. And here are my thoughts. So we have a very interesting compact size and design. The performance is probably the best we have seen in an Android streaming box so far. I believe this box can also support multiple OSs like Ubuntu, Android 12 and Windows 11 will also be available soon. And that would certainly make this box more interesting. However, there are some caveats to consider. The price is rather high for an Android streaming box. In fact, it's more expensive than the Nvidia Shield TV and the Apple TV 4K. But after paying that high premium, you're still not getting certification for 4K in Netflix or Amazon Prime Video and Disney Plus is not even supported. So instead you are limited to SD quality. However, if you were able to install Windows 11 on this box, then that would probably give you a much better streaming resolution across the board. And finally, Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos not supported on this box. So at this point, it's easier to pick up a Shield TV, Fire TV 4K, or even an Apple TV 4K for a better official 4K streaming experience. The chipset is great, very powerful for a streaming box, and this box can play back real 8K videos. But all being said, you do need to consider those caveats to ask yourself, is this worth the high asking price? I hope you found this one useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.